Everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, and this is the FN America 509 Tactical. For those of you that've been following along for a while, you know that I did not too long ago a review on FN's 509, and I've also done a review on the FNS, which is still one of my favorite out-of-the-box 9mm handguns ever made. The 509 came in right behind that. The 509 Tactical is the 509. Uh, they added the Tactical on it because you can add options to it. It's an OEM option, or I should say, an OEM optic mounting platform which because optics are still relatively new for everyday carry and for duty use, a lot of manufacturers haven't put in what I would consider to be their due diligence in producing a handgun that would accept a wide degree of the popular uh, reliable optics that are out there. Uh, there are others that already exist and there were some that did it before FN, but was FN able to do it better? It, of course, is no secret that everyone knows someone who knows someone, or maybe you know someone directly, or maybe you are that someone, who can mill a slide for an optic. Uh, the quality of that milling varies greatly, but it exists. So people, generally, they choose an optic, and hopefully that's the optic they're going to stick with, and they have their slide milled. Uh, not everybody's in that boat. A lot, of, a lot of law enforcement agencies are not willing to accept the what they might consider an additional risk and a void of warranty by having duty guns milled. So having an OEM platform that will accept options is definitely, well, advantageous not only to law enforcement agencies but to people who may necessarily not want to send out a slide to get it milled may not trust it for whatever reason uh, or they're still not sure what optic they're going to carry or they want a gun that's going to be uh, versatile enough to accept future optics so they're going to go with an OEM platform prior to the uh, the FN tactical or the FN 509 tactical I should say there were only a few options out there and like I said a lot of them weren't executed as well as they could have been Getting into features, the 509T comes with a threaded barrel, which is something, as far as OEM offerings, is kind of new to FN. It used to be very, very hard, especially in the old FNS line, to find a threaded barrel if you wanted to shoot a suppressor. And the 509 came out, again, threaded barrels from the factory were not an option. With the 509T, it comes standard. It also comes with a 17 round and two 24 round magazines and a cool little zipper pouch. And the optics mounting kits for a wide degree of the optics that are out there. During the review process, I used a Trigicon RMR and a Leupold Delta Point Pro. And I'll get into why I used two different optics during the review process. As far as features go, one of the cool things about the 509T is it comes from the factory with two different recoil springs. You're gonna get a 17 and a 21 pound spring. Some of you may be asking why. Well, if you plan on shooting it suppressed, a heavier spring may be beneficial. If you plan on shooting it comped, a lighter spring can be beneficial. You have the ability to tune the weight of your recoil spring according to what you're gonna use the firearm for, which I think is super cool. Uh, carrying on for the improvements on the 509, the 509T shares the improved uh, slide release and the improved magazine catch slash release. So those are two cool features. It is an ambi gun, which is pretty much standard these days. Uh, the sights that come, Trigicon night sights, if night sights are something you feel you have to have, it's going to come standard those, and they are height to co-witness, uh, and when I say co-witness, I mean see over the optic body of the majority of the optics you're going to put on this firearm. Getting into the review process itself, the first thing I'm going to do is my 500 round burn down. If you're not familiar, I'm going to put 500 rounds through the firearm as fast as possible to see if the accelerated heat or the accelerated volume of fire creates any problems that you might not necessarily notice with casual shooting. Another reason I wanted to do the burn down is to see if that heat or just that volume of fire was going to create any issues with the mounting system. So without further ado, here's your burn down.
Immediately after the burn down, I checked the zero on the mounted optic. No problems, uh, which is what I was expecting. The tolerances of the mounting systems, and again, I've only used the, the mounting system for the RMR and for the Delta Point. And the 509 Tactical does seem to be, uh, does seem to favor the Delta Point system. It's less parts for mounting it, it mounts directly to the milling, versus with the, uh, the RMR, I have to use that additional plate. Uh, which makes the optics sit a little bit higher than I would like, which is probably if I had to have a complaint going into, initially going into the 509 Tactical Review, it's the optics do sit higher than I would like, uh, but it's something that can be learned, and if this is the only firearm you're going to use for optics, it's probably something you'd never notice. Now the accuracy after the 500 round burn down, the zero was maintained, which is something I was definitely worried about, but that's just shooting. Uh, people are going to use the optic body to manipulate the firearm, uh, either in one-handed shooting or because they're taking a class and that's something that's going to be covered with manipulating the gun off of objects and things like that. Personally, I do not advocate the use of the optic body to manipulate the slide of the firearm unless you absolutely have to. And that's being a one-handed situation where I, for some reason I can't use the slide release, slide slop, so on and so forth. Uh, but because it's something that can happen and is something that you should be able to do in the event that you need to do it, God forbid, uh, we want to see if, because of the mounting system, that's going to create any problems. I wanted to see if I was going to be able to break the plates or if I was going to be able to cause a significant zero shift because there are more parts in their mounting system than maybe you'd see, obviously, than you'd see from a milled slide and maybe you'd see from some of their uh, competitors out there that have their own OEM mounting systems. So I'm going to manipulate the gun just like I would with any review process and I'm going to use the optic body and in this case I used both the RMR and the delta point, two separate zeros, two separate times, multiple times manipulating the gun with the optic body to see if I could cause a zero shift. Without getting completely unrealistic with that testing process, I'm just using the optic body to, to, to reciprocate the slide to load an next round, uh, or in any situation where reciprocation of the slide makes sense. And I did some dedicated, just isolated pressings uh, off of a hard object, such as a barrier piece cover. In that case, it was a wooden post. I did that with the RMR. I also did uh, the delt point. And what I was surprised to find, or I should say not really surprised to find because of the, the actual tolerances that I noticed when installing the optic for both mounting systems, both optics, both little kits, parts configurations, I should say, that you have to use. Uh, the tolerance is very tight. So I was not expecting a zero shift, and that's exactly what I got. Shooting the RMR at 25 meters after the manipulation on the zero that it was zeroed with, after all the manipulations I did, it maintained zero, point A and point impact exactly where it was zeroed. With the delta point, the case wasn't any different. Shooting the same distance, uh, 25. Uh, five round groups. I'm shooting 124 grain gold dot because that's my zero ammo and the delta point again also did not shift. Now I can't speak to the other optics that the 509T will accept but I think a sample size of two is pretty good especially considering the RMR and the delta point are very popular optics especially for duty use. One thing that initially did give me a little bit of a pause with the 509T is the the recoil plates, the recoil boss plates, whatever recoil lug adapter plates, whatever you want to call them. They are cast. Uh, I've had problems with cast products for optic mounting systems from other companies, them breaking, uh, mostly just breaking, because uh, there's not a lot of give to them. Once you put a certain amount of torque or they get a certain amount of force delivered to them, shearing force like manipulating the optic, uh, they can break, and that's something I didn't want to see. However, the overall design of the 510T's milling and the way that the plates, the, the cast plate is only acting as your recoil lug and it's not actually your mounting surface itself, uh, definitely lended itself well to where it was able to be very, very successful and the chances of one of you breaking one of those plates is pretty minimal with realistic pressure. So I was glad to find that it was able to come through that. Uh, all the manipulations I did during the 2000 round review process without any issues. Not everything is great. The overall uh, performance of the 510T is awesome. It's an accurate gun, it shoots well. The controls are ergonomic. Uh, they're easy to be manipulated. For me, being primarily a left-handed shooter, generally ambi guns are not really, but uh, the 510T lends itself very well to both right and left-handed shooting because I shoot both ways. Uh, 
as far as the optic height, because I kind of already talked about that, I would like to see them get a little bit deeper in the slide. I'd like the optic to sit a little bit lower, but it's not something that I can't deal with. And it's certainly not so cartoonishly high that it's going to create a problem with holsters or gear concealed versus duty. Uh, you're not really going to have uh, an issue there as one that I can see from, from my experience with the gun. Uh, the trigger, 5.5 uh, to 7.5 in there somewhere as quoted by FN in the manual and on the website and anywhere else you're going to find the official trigger weight. Uh, I would like to see it a little bit lighter than that or have an option from the factory to have it a little bit lighter than that. There's nothing wrong with a 5.5 pound trigger but I would like to have a 4 because that's just my preference. Aftermarket options are increasing for the 509T and the 509 because it is getting more popular so you already have an aftermarket trigger from Apex. Uh, you'll have one coming from Agency Arms soon and there's some other options out there. And as far as forward thinking goes, the cool thing about the 509T is it's already poised to be uh, compatible with the new Aimpoint Arco, the, uh, the newest miniaturized red dot sight that's coming uh, mostly geared towards pistol use. So even though the 509T was developed without the, fi or the Arco in mind, it's already ready to accept the Arco already. Final verdict on the 509T is very positive. It is in the most tactical of colors, black, uh, but initially it did release in desert tan for all those people who want to go back to 2005. Uh, but that's cool. Uh, you have two color options. I'd like to see an OD green, but that's just me, and I know I'm in a minority on that, but OD green is the true one true color. Uh, as far as an out-of-the-box gun that's optics ready, this is the best OEM system available, period. Like, there's, like, as far as I'm concerned, and I have a pretty large sample size, I see a lot of guns, some come through classes, and I spend a lot of time shooting optic-equipped handguns, and I've tried pretty much all of the OEM systems out there, and I hate them all for maybe slightly different reasons. Uh, usually it's because the manufacturer is too timid in their approach to making their gun optics ready. Uh, sometimes the, the, when somebody calls their gun optics ready, they should put an asterisk on it saying, maybe, not really, we tried, but we were scared. The 509T is a departure from that. It is the best OEM system out there for accepting multiple optics. Even though you'll probably just pick one and stick with it, it is nice to be able to change as new optics become available. Um, and they do seem to be coming out pretty frequently uh, when you take into account how long a gun is going to last you. Uh, out of the box, you get a, an aggressive frame, changeable back straps, you have your front cocking serrations, you have a good slide finish, uh, you have an accurate gun with a high capacity for duty or self-defense carry, accessory rail, and it's ready to take whatever optic you're going to, almost any optic that you're going to put on it. So when it comes to an OEM optics platform, there really is anything, isn't anything better than the FN America 509T. I'm Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.